Romans chapter number 2, we'll begin reading verse number 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impentant heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteousness or of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you had that you sent your Son to die in our place. God, thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. Thank you for the house of God, the people of God. Thank you for the treasures we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to church tonight, have the strength and have the desire to come. God, I pray that, Lord, you'd bless those that are working with the young people on the other side. Bless the young people. Thank you for them. God, I pray you'd bless them and help them. Hedge them in. And God, uh, 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 help their minds to uh, not be swayed by the ways of the world, but help their minds to be swayed by the Word of God, which they've hid in their heart. God, I pray for them young people that aren't saved, that, Lord, we'll see them get saved. God, I certainly thank you for these that are here this Sunday night. Lord, I pray you'd bless them abundantly. I do pray, Lord, for Brother Adrian as he's traveling. You give him traveling mercy. I pray for those of others of our church that are uh, uh, traveling, that are away, that you'd be with them. I pray for Brother Ed that has surgery scheduled in the morning, that, God, you'd give the doctors and the surgeons the wisdom and the nurses the wisdom to care for him. And I pray, Lord, that this surgery would help him abundantly. And God, I don't know why he's had to go through what he went through, but God, you had a purpose in it. And God, I pray that that purpose uh, would be revealed to his heart. And God, you'd use him for your glory. And God, I pray this surgery, Lord, uh, would give him better quality of life. Uh, Father, I pray for Samantha that has to have surgery on Friday. You would be with her the same and help her and help her quality of life. Uh, Father, I do pray uh, for Miss uh, Tammy's Aunt Shirley. God, you'd touch her and help her. You know what that dear saint's going through. And God, I pray for her. I pray for Sister Tammy's family. God, you'd work in them. And God, I pray for other needs. Brother Mike and Brother Jay and Brother Bobby. I pray for them. I pray you'd help them. I pray for that revival going on down Cannon Mountain. God, you'd continue to stir and bless and change that region and God I pray you'd fan our way and change our region and God I pray you'd break out something that's real and supernatural that man couldn't take the credit for and God I pray you'd be glorified in it all uh, continue to save folks and continue uh, uh, to stir your people uh, now Father bless tonight bless the reading of the word of God uh, bless these thy people uh, help us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus we'll thank you for it for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention to several things. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, the prudery of judgment. That word prudery means the hypocrisy of judgment. We find in verse number 1, the great apostle Paul writing to folks that think they're better than other folks. Uh, he says, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, uh, whosoever thou art that judges. Uh, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, uh, for thou that judgest doest the same thing. Uh, can I say that's the definition of hypocrisy, to say one thing and to do another. Uh, 
Can I say that was the religion of the Pharisees? Uh, they were hypocrites. Jesus called them that. Uh, called them a generation of vipers and hypocrites. Uh, and can I say, uh, you better be careful judging another because uh, the Lord's keeping a record. Uh, and here the great apostle warns about judging people for things uh, and you doing the very same thing in your own life. Uh, we see the prudery of judgment. I want you to see the principle of judgment. Look in verse number 2. We find the Bible says, Be, uh, But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Can I say the principle of judgment is truth? Now we live in a day and age uh, where judges don't judge based on truth. They don't judge based on the law. They don't judge based on what's right. Uh, they judge based on politics, uh, or they judge based on pr uh, pr personal preferences. Uh, but there's coming a day, neighbor, uh, when the righteous judge, uh, everyone's going to stand before him, uh, and we'll all be judged according to truth. Hallelujah. Huh? That's why we need to be real careful when we judge people, because we can't see people's heart. And we don't always know all the truth. It's quick to look down our nose at somebody. It'd be easy to say, well, Miss Janet missed another service, but you don't know what she's going through. She's already had about 75 stents put in her arteries to keep her heart pumping blood. Uh, we don't always know the truth, but the Lord does. And the true principle of judgment has to be truth. We not only see that, we see the practice of judgment. Look at verse number 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Uh, for when the Gentiles, uh, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, uh, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, uh, their conscience also bearing witness, uh, and their thoughts uh, of the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Uh, can I say the practice of judgment uh, is not what we say with our lips, uh, but how obedient we are to the things of God. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I'll show you my faith by my works. Uh, you will know how much I love Jesus by how I live uh, and how I uh, uh, conduct my being. The practice of judgment is played out in how obedient we are to the law. It's based on our works according to Christ. But then notice, if you will, the phlegmatic of judgment. Look at verse number 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. That word phlegmatic means impartiality. God's not partial to anybody. The only one God's concerned about is himself and what he's given us. And my dear friends, it doesn't matter if you're Jew, Gentile, don't matter what color you are, don't matter what side of the tracks you was born on, don't matter how much money you got, how much money you don't have, don't matter anything about that, what God is going to judge us according to truth. Neither he is no respecter of persons. Isn't it wonderful? To know that God bases everything for all of us on the same standard? Right. Amen. Hmm. Isn't it ridiculous that in America there's a double standard? If you've got enough prestige, you've got, you got enough money, it don't matter what the law says. Right. We've got enough politicians in, in Washington, they fill up the jails across America if, if they were tried based on truth. Amen. Hmm. Hmm. You think Hillary deserves to be walking around free? You think Bill deserves to be walking around free? You think a Biden can even walk around under his own power? Uh, well, I'm telling you, just think, to, just think of it this way. How many of you love paying taxes? I really love paying, ta paying taxes and watching them send it to Ukraine, don't you? Uh, but can I say... Isn't it ridiculous that a lot of us pay a higher tax rate than people who's got a whole lot more money than us? How come there's just not a flat tax rate? Because there's partiality. But aren't you glad the Lord requires the same of all of us? Isn't that a blessing? Ah, some of you are about to faint. I ain't even preaching. 
Notice, if you will, the penalty of judgment. Hmm? Look at verse number 5. But after thy hardness and impentant heart treasures up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Look with me down verse uh, verse 6. For who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who, are, uh, who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are conscientious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first uh, and also the Gentile, but glory, honor, peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also the Gentile. Notice... Uh, one of these days we're going to reap what we sow. Yes, to those that are evil, they're going to have evil, 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 evil brought before them and they're going to suffer forever in the lake of fire. To those that obey the truth, uh, my dear friends, we'll appear at the judgment seat of Christ give an account of the deeds done in our body, whether they were good or evil. But there is a penalty of judgment. God will render judgment. Those things that were done for the honor and glory of God it would be gold, silver, and precious gems. Uh, those things done for the flesh would be wood, hay, and stubble. There's coming a day. But then I want you to notice the person of judgment. Look at verse 16. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Can I say there's one person of judgment. His name is Jesus Christ. All judgment's been committed to him. He's the righteous judge. The Bible says, who am I to judge another man's servant? See, when we judge somebody, judge one another, we're telling Christ we know better than him. He's the judge. He's the person of judgment. You know what to help us? If we quit passing judgment, just let him do it. If you're honest, you've got a 24-hour day job taking care of yourself. Why are you judging somebody else? But I'm not going to preach on judgment. Aren't you glad to hear that? No, I'm interested in verse number 4. He says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing, that the, not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Two times in that verse he mentions the goodness of God. And I want to preach on that for a little while. I want to preach on the goodness of God. Can I say we're all worthy to stand before God being thrown off into hell? But I'm not going to hell tonight. Because of the goodness of God. I mean, even though that's what I deserve, uh, even though uh, God would be just and throw me into hell, uh, I'm not going to hell because God in His goodness made a way uh, where we don't have to go to hell. Uh, God uh, allowed His sin to go to the cross uh, to take our judgment, to take our condemnation, to take our sin. Uh, to throw uh, all of the handwritings and ordinances and the law that contrary to us Jesus nailed it to his cross and it's no longer valid when it comes to you and I because of the goodness of God can I say the goodness of God caused Jesus to leave a crown for a cross Jesus didn't have to come he could have stayed in glory but he left glory came into this world uh, put on a body of flesh, uh, lived in this sin-cursed world for some 33 years. Uh, 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 he lived amongst men. Uh, he was touched by the feeling of our infirmities, yet he was without sin. Uh, and he marched up Calvary's mountain, uh, and he yielded himself to the cross uh, after they'd beaten him beyond recognition. Uh, and he was suspended between heaven and hell. Uh, he left a crown for a cross uh, uh, because of the goodness of God. Uh, God said there's only one way we can redeem fallen man uh, and Jesus said I'll go father uh, I'll leave it all so they can have it all uh, uh, the goodness of God uh, uh, caused him to go to the cross for you and I uh, we ought to bless the Lord uh, we ought to get excited beyond our minds uh, uh, at the thought of the fact and the thought uh, we ought to be in hell tonight uh, but the goodness of God uh, kept us from hell uh, when Jesus died for our sin uh, and oh uh, what a day uh, when you heard the gospel and realized you could be saved from your sins uh, thank God for the goodness of God uh, and I say the goodness of God left a crown for the cross can I say the goodness of God loves sinners uh, God hates sin 
And he's angry with the wicked every day. But he loves sinners. I don't understand that. He hated everything about us, yet he loved us. Amen. Think about that. The Bible said in Romans 5, 8, but God commended. I've heard people say commanded. That's not what it says. Commended his love toward us. That means uh, he issued out and gave us uh, 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 his kindness and his mercy uh, 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 toward us. Uh, and that why we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, long before we ever was, God made a way and a provision for us. Uh, and God looked at us, uh, saw our wickedness, uh, saw our sin, uh, yet he loved us anyway. Uh, that's uh, the goodness of God. Uh, God God in His holiness, uh, God in His righteousness, uh, God in His glory uh, loved us enough uh, that He extended us goodness even though we didn't deserve it. He loved sinners. 1 John 4 says this, verse number 9, And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, uh, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world uh, that we might live through Him uh, here in His love. Not that we love God, uh, but that He loved us uh, and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Uh, and Jesus Christ is our mercy seat today because of the goodness of God. Oh, He left a crown for a cross. He loved sinners. But our text verse shows us the goodness of God leadeth us to repentance. Look again in verse number 4. Not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Hey, he made a way, but then he led us to the truth. He led us to repentance. John 6, said, No man can come to me except the Father uh, which has sent me draw him, uh, and I'll raise him up in the last day. Uh, there's a lot of preaching today about people making decisions but nobody ever gets to Calvary unless they've been convicted of their sins Amen. and I say the goodness of God brother Donald came to you over there on the job and brother Stephen started showing you the gospel and the goodness of God led you to repent and trust Christ saved you out of dead religion and gave you a relationship with the creator Huh? that was the goodness of God God could have let you just continue on your life as a drunk and let you die and go to hell. But oh, God in His goodness said, I love that old boy, and I'm going to make a way. And God drew you to Himself. And every one of us, we wasn't seeking after God. We didn't retain God in our knowledge. Uh, but God came to where we was in the goodness of God. Showed us we was lost. Showed us we deserved to go to hell. Uh, but in His goodness said, you don't have to. Uh, I've made a way. Uh, and if you come and repent and believe on me, I'll change your life and change your eternity. And the goodness of God is what led us to repentance. Hmm? Aren't you glad God put somebody in your way to let you know about Him? Uh, somebody might have witnessed to you on the job or somebody might have been a great influence on you in your family or some way, shape, or form. Or maybe you just ended up in a church because somebody invited you. You drove by and thought, I need to go to church. I don't know what it took, but God got you to a place where you could hear the gospel and God made a way where you could get saved. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7.10 said, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. I always worry about somebody that says they got saved, but they never seem to be too torn up about being lost. Mm. I know our emotions are different. And I've seen people get saved, and they're just so joyful and so happy because they believed on the Lord. But I know when I realized I was lost. And when I made my way to Calvary, there was something in me that broke. Uh, I just worry about folks who never see any change in their, in their emotions. I know we're not saved by feelings. We're saved by our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But there's something about realizing you deserve to go to hell. And Jesus died for you and you didn't deserve it. And Jesus will save you. There's something that will tear you up. Hmm? Something will change. Something will happen. Uh, but I'm glad that godly sorrow worketh repentance. Mm, you know what's wrong in a lot of our Baptist churches? People have never gotten lost. Mm. You say, does that really happen? Talk to Brother Bob. He was a lost church member for a lot of years. Until God showed him he's lost. 
Uh, aren't you glad he's a long-suffering God, Brother Bob? Aren't you glad he winked at our ignorance? Huh? What a Savior, huh? Thank God for the goodness of God that led us to repentance. And I thought about this, the goodness of God loads us with benefits. <laughs> Psalm 68, 19, blessed, bless the Lord, uh, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. Uh, the goodness of God's what loads us with benefits. You know what? You can never be good enough to earn anything from God. But He's good enough to bless you anyway. He just loads us with benefits. I got to think about what are benefits. You know, if you go to work for a company, they pay you a wage. But if it's a good company, they'll give you benefits. Benefits go beyond your, your, your pay. Huh? Can I say? The Lord goes beyond our worth. He loads us with benefits. I thought I got to think about what a benefit is. A benefit, uh, benefits are profits. Hmm? Uh, anybody that ever tries to invest something, they, they invest it hoping to get a profit. Can, can I say the Lord invested in us, and then He gives us the profits. He daily loads us with benefits. Uh, I mean, if He just met our needs, that's more than we deserve. But He goes beyond that, and we profit well beyond what we deserve. Uh, can I say that? Uh, uh, benefits are not only profits, they're privileges. You know it's a privilege to have the Word of God? Do you know it's a privilege to have a church? Uh, do you know it's a privilege to be able to call on the Lord in prayer and He hears and answers our prayer? Uh, do you know it's a privilege that He walks with us uh, and talks with us uh, and speaks to us? Uh, do you know it's a privilege uh, to carry His name, uh, tell people we're a Christian? Uh, that's a privilege. Uh, hey, uh, those are all benefits. Uh, I'm glad I got saved. And the night I got saved, uh, my granddaddy said, Son, are you satisfied? I said, Yes, sir, I am. But I can tell you, I didn't know about all the benefits. I, I was satisfied of being saved. But after I got saved, goodness and mercy moved in. And the benefits of God began to overflow all because of the goodness of God. It's not only profits and privileges, but it's pluses. I've got a bunch of pluses since I got saved. The Lord gave me a wonderful wife, gave me wonderful children. Gave me a beautiful grant. Those are all pluses. Huh? Lord's plussed me and plussed me and plussed me. All because of the goodness of God. Uh, there are a lot of people when they start giving testimonies, they act like they've lost something getting saved. But they didn't meet the Lord. I'm telling you, I never lost anything. And I, I've never missed out on anything in the world. I like when the youth choir sings that song about they say we've missed out on something. We haven't missed out on anything. Uh, all the world is is negativity and minuses. Uh, I've got pluses. Uh, i got the best life you can live, and then I get heaven. What a blessing, huh? All because of the goodness of God. The goodness of God loads us with benefits. But then I, I like this little thought right here. Thank God for the goodness of God. The goodness of God. And somebody explain this to me. But the goodness of God causes God to long for our company. I mean, I, I long for His presence. But do you know that He longs for our presence? The Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 21, and the people stood afar off. And that's what some of you are doing tonight. Some of you are saved. Your name's written down in heaven. You come to church. You're faithful. But you're standing afar off. Some of you have been a long time since you worshipped. Been a long time since uh, you really got full of the goodness of God. Been a long time. Hmm? I'm not pointing any fingers. But you know who you are. You're enduring this thing. Not enjoying it. But listen to what it said. And the people stood afar off. And Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. God beckoned Moses to come to where he was. Because God wanted the presence of Moses. Can I say through the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been granted access to the throne of God. 
And he told us to boldly come to the throne of grace that we may obtain help in time of need. Now, do you realize that God loves our company? God longs for our presence. God longs for us to shut out the world for a little while uh, and to walk into his presence uh, and to fellowship with him uh, and to talk with him uh, and to rejoice in him uh, and to praise him uh, and to glorify him. Uh, God loves that one-on-one -on -one time uh, uh, with you and I. Uh, hey, who are we? Uh, oh, rotten Gentile dogs uh, that God would long for our presence. Uh, it's all because of the goodness of God uh, that God wants the fellowship with you and I. Now, you all know that Miss Net and I, family is a big deal. And we love our family. We go on vacation with our family. We eat Sunday dinner with our family. Our family's always welcome to our house. Uh, 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 my family's welcome to the freezer any time. They're welcome to what's in the cabinets any time. They're welcome to drive anything I got but that one thing. But they're welcome. They're welcome. Come here, baby. Who could turn this down? Huh? She's been a big ribs girl today. We love our family. But there's times when Miss Annette just loves Miss Annette and me time. There's times we just like to go places together. There's times we just like to spend together. And can I say that God loves when we corporately come together and we assemble together and we come to worship Him together. He loves meeting us at the church house. He loves when we're all together. Uh, he loves when we pull up under His table and we dine for a little while. Uh, he loves when we sing songs of praise unto Him. Uh, he loves uh, when we get together and we shout the victory uh, and we glorify the Lord. Uh, but I want to tell you, God loves that. Uh, but He longs for you and I to shut everything else out uh, and just spend some one on one one time with him uh, and just glorify him and be with him uh, and appreciate uh, the sweet relationship we can have with God. Uh, God longs for that because of the goodness of God. And I'm here to tell you we take for granted the goodness of God. Just like she just took for granted the privilege of hanging out with me. But that time is gone now. So tonight, I just want you for a few minutes to get your mind off all the negativity of this, this sorry world. Get your mind off your storms and your problems. Get your mind off the heartaches and hardships and just start thinking about the goodness of God. Where would we be without His tender touch? What would we be without His sweet consolations? Where would we be without His wonderfulness in our lives? I'll tell you where we'd be. We'd be in a mess. Some of you, it's been a while since you considered the goodness of God. I get it when you're going through it. I get it when things are tough, when things are hard, when you're consumed with everything that's going around you. I get it. But never lose sight of the goodness of God. The goodness of God will get you through those hard times. The goodness of God will get you through that heartache. The goodness of God will propel you through what all is going on in this world. Hey, I don't like anything that's going on in this world any more than anybody else. But hey, you know what keeps me balanced? The goodness of God. Uh, when's the last time the goodness of God was real to you? When's the last time you really appreciated the goodness of God? When's the last time you realize God wants to spend time with you. Why don't you turn off the radio? Why don't you turn off the noise of the world? Why don't you turn off everything else and just spend some time with God? It'll help you, friend. Say, how do you know? Because he's helped me. And he's no respecter of persons. Tonight, would you please consider how good God really has been to you and I? And if we'll consider his goodness, oh, my friend, You'll find worship. You'll find a walk. You'll find that you can be a witness because you'll appreciate His sweet goodness. I thank God for the goodness of God. Do you?
Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song. Miss Tina, come to the piano. Thank God for His goodness. Maybe tonight you just need to come and thank Him. Maybe tonight you need to come and confess it's been too long since you've spent time with Him. Maybe tonight you need to come and say, Lord, I'm sorry I've let everything in this world have my attention and I haven't focused on really how good you've been to me. Maybe tonight you need to come and accept the Lord as your Savior. I don't know you need. All I know is God's been good. And you and I, oh, we're indebted to the goodness of God. Folks have come. They're getting a song ready. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the goodness of God. Lord, we don't deserve it. We don't deserve the unmerited favor of God. But we sure do appreciate it. Now, Lord, I don't know anybody's heart in here tonight. But, Lord, I, I believe there are some who are suffering. There are some who are facing dire things. There are some that life in this world has consumed them. And Lord, it's been a while since they really appreciated the goodness of God. There may be some here tonight that, Lord, they're in a deep valley. Lord, there may be some here tonight who's facing tremendous heartbreak. Lord, I pray for that goodness of God to saturate them and to help them and, Lord, to love on them. And, God, I pray you'd just bless them good. Lord, there's some you may be longing for them to come into the thick darkness and spend a little time with you, some one-on-one -on -one time. Help your people to appreciate the goodness of God enough to do that. Lord, just speak to hearts in this invitation. And God, certainly if there's anybody in our midst unsaved, I pray tonight the goodness of God would lead them to repentance. God, just have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.